Hello, Sue, over to you, if that's OK. Hi, um, thank you for joining us um, this evening. Um, this is uh, an event to discuss um, the uh, Building Better Hospitals um, as part of the consultation to improve services in the hospitals um, in Leicester. Um, I'm joined tonight by uh, a number of um, people from both University Hospitals of, of Leicester and from the CCGs. Um, so what the purpose of tonight is, is, is for is if um, people want to make any um, comments, ask any questions or discuss any aspects of the proposal, uh, then we can we can do that. Just simply um, raise your hand or just switch your video on and then we'll address any questions that you've got. Uh, so just so you know who is actually on the call, um, I'll just go ask people if they can introduce themselves. So Alice, did I start with uh, with you? Yes, good evening, everybody. I'm Alice McGee. I'm the executive director of People and Innovation for the three clinical cl cl commissioning groups. Thanks, Alice. Uh, Andrew? Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Andrew Furlong. I'm the medical director at University Hospitals of Leicester. And uh, Darren? Hi, good evening. I'm Darren Kerr, Director of Estates, Facilities and Capital Development at uh, University Hospital of Leicester. Thanks. And uh, Flo? Hello, everyone. My name's Flo Cox. I'm the Community Midwifery Matron for Leicester, Leicestershire, Rutland and St Mary's Birth Centre in Melton. OK, that's that's lovely. Uh, so we um, we are just recording the um, the event uh, tonight. Uh, that's really just for the purpose the um, information thing people ask us about. We can make sure or information that they share. We can make sure that that is um, is contributes to the overall consultation process because it's really important um, that any feedback that we got we get is captured. Um, so I'll I'll open it um, up if there are any um, any questions um, or any comments relating to the the consultation process. Um, perhaps I could just um, ask uh, just perhaps for a little bit more detail around the um, aspects of the of the consultation uh, that might be important to to people. So. Um, Andrew, is there anything you'd just like to say perhaps around the um, the treatment centre or other aspects of the of the consultation? Thanks, Sue. So perhaps it's useful just to remind people uh, what the consultation is about and what it's not about. So the consultation is about uh, the proposals for changes to the uh, acute and maternity services in Leicester's three hospitals. That's the Glenfield Hospital, the Leicester Royal Infirmary and the Leicester General. We're also uh, consulting about services delivered at the midwifery led birthing unit at St Mary's Hospital in Melton Mowbray. Uh, so the consultation is not about the community hospitals, the GP practices and the mental health services. It's just about the acute services delivered within the three hospitals and the, and the birthing unit at St Mary's. Briefly, uh, the, the changes that we're proposing at a high level involve creating uh, the first dedicated single site children's hospital in the East Midlands based in the Kensington building at the Leicester Royal Infirmary, a new maternity hospital at the Leicester Royal Infirmary, two uh, new intensive care units, uh, doubling the intensive care capacity for the city and counties, uh, going from uh, just 49 beds uh, to over 100 beds, uh, also to create a, a new planned care treatment centre at the Glenfield Hospital, which will allow us to, where clinically appropriate, separate urgent and emergency care so that, that we can offer more certainty to patients who are having planned procedures such as outpatient day case and some, uh, some uh, operations and the like. Uh, it will also involve uh, changes to building some additional wards, operating theatres and imaging facilities and uh, additional car parking on the, the Leicester Royal and the Glenfield site and alongside that we're also consulting on moving what is an excellent but underutilised uh, midwifery led birthing unit at Melton Mowbray to relocate that to the Leicester General site so that we can uh, hopefully uh, offer uh, more women the chance to have uh, the, their babies in a standalone midwifery birthing unit. 
That's great. Thanks for that, um, Andrew. Um, there are other things as part of the, the consultation um, at which people can actually fill in either online or um, obtain a, a hard copy. Um, we're asking for people's views on each aspect of the proposals that we're putting forward, like views on the maternity services and the, and the treatment centre. Um, but we're also asking for people's views around other aspects of the proposal. So, for example, the, the treatment centre uh, means that there's an opportunity to utilise new technologies and have appointments in different ways if it's appropriate to people's care. So we're actually as part of the consultation asking questions around that in terms of whether telephone um, consultations or whether uh, Skype or, or other technology could be could be used and how people would be, whether they would be receptive um, to that. Um, I think one key aspect of the proposal where people were really keen to hear what people um, think is around um, the general hospital um, because we're very keen on establishing um, a hub there, a community hub, uh, and offer a variety of different services, particularly to support um, people living in, in that side of the city and also um, in, in bordering areas. So there's a whole raft of, of questions around what people would like to see what matters to them about that particular um, site. And then the other thing that is very often very close to people's hearts around the, the consultation is those things about on the periphery, um, whether that's around access, car parking, um, and, and those sorts of things. And we always have a lot of questions uh, usually around uh, that aspect and people do like to, to put um, points point of view forward. So I don't know whether, um, just while we're waiting for um, any questions, whether Darren, do you want to just talk about those things that are around the periphery of the of the consultation? Yeah, certainly Sue. So. Uh, just to cover off a few points, um, if, if you were um, um, able to have seen the video earlier, you will have heard mention in the video about the state of our state, for want of a better word. And um, it, it is very variable. It's variable across all three um, of our sites. And in fact, some of our, some of I think our oldest bill goes back to 1771, which puts it, you know, 249 years old. And and um, buildings across at the Leicester General, for example, go back to, to 1905. It's very difficult to deliver modern health care in the constraints of of some of our estate. And this provides uh, as you heard, as you heard Andrew say, if you were watching the video, this almost once in a once in a, a lifetime opportunity for a lot of people to actually modernise our healthcare environment. So whilst it's easy for me to sit here and focus very much on 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 what I like to think is you know some of the super exciting opportunity of putting new buildings up, the important thing sir, is is how this is underpinned by our clinical strategy. It won't be successful if we don't recognise the need to transform some of our clinical services as well. And also the opportunity it brings not just for the trust and for the broader health economy, but for Leicestershire itself, because it gives us an opportunity to introduce this concept that we talk about called social values, which is about how this investment coming into the city, which is the biggest investment we've had across the county since 2008, since we did the second phase of the extension of the High Cross Centre in, this, in the city centre in Leicester. So it's a fantastic opportunity to invest in in the economy across the city. And that's going to be really exciting for us in terms of how we use some of our local companies, how we use small or medium enterprises, how we look at apprenticeship programs, how we do all of these things in parallel with um, what we started to talk about there, some of the obvious other opportunities working within the city itself and, and the broader uh, networks outside around improving transport networks, for example. This is a great opportunity for us to work collaboratively with the councils and improve, improving how we get access to our sites. When you get to our site, can you then park? Can you then navigate around the site easily? Can you, when you get into our buildings, do not do under our buildings only look warm and welcoming? I mean, it look like modern healthcare environments. And we've got things like welcome centres to introduce you, to help you to navigate through the building. 
utilizing new te- some of these new technologies. So when you come in, hopefully, with smart technologies that exist on phones these days, and I'm sad to say old enough to remember when I think the, the, the power of technology in my phone now would have been in a room half the size of the LRI not, not that many decades ago. And it's, um, it's fantastic that when we've got to utilize that technology, so one of the key things for us is developing our digital platforms that are going to go in parallel with this. And, and um, you know, we've been again fortunate in the trust to be accepted as one of the digital aspirant sites. So we'll be looking at things like digital technology to enable people to virtually attend clinics and reduce the amount of physical attendance on site using telemetry, using virtual clinics, using some of the technology when you do arrive on site. Get to see where you're going to go in the building before you even get there and be able to navigate your way through. So as Andrew said, it's it's very difficult not to be anything other than, you know, fantastically excited by the opportunities this brings for us. But we do get it's not without its challenges and it's not without its challenges in, in areas like accessibility. We, we, we absolutely get that. And even though we do think that this is going to be better for the majority of people, in terms of being able to get from A to B in the sites. There will be, for a small percentage of people, it is going to be more challenging. That's why we're working collaboratively on a travel plan and, and on other things like cycle networks and others. We've got to provide that and alternatives to using a car to get the site. But we're working collaboratively with the City Council, with County Council and others, and, and other opportunities for investment funds that exist to improve that, those arrangements. And um, I hope that at some point I'll, I'll get my career to where I'm not going to be talking about car parking every day. And um, <laughs> I think that's probably overly ambitious. Um, but again, you know, we've, we've got to take this opportunity, this once in a, once in a decade you know, or, or once in a generation opportunity to be able to improve some of these basic things that underpin the delivery of good, of good health care and, and how people it will feel they arrive on on our site so it's a you know a great fantastic opportunity a lot of work ahead but this is you know this this is so exciting this is almost half a billion pounds worth of investment into the economy in leicestershire and why wouldn't why wouldn't we be excited about that that's great thanks for that um darren so just to remind people um you know you've got the opportunity to put your um uh mics on and and videos on um and do ask any questions um i suppose the the other key aspect to the um of the development um that i'm just going to ask um flo just to talk about is the exciting um part for the, for the maternity hospital um do you, do you want to just um quickly give us an overview of, of those developments Yes, um, we're um, looking at having one um, consultant unit and with that consultant unit it will be based at the Royal and it will have a co-located birth centre. We're also looking at having an intermediate delivery suite as well because um, a lot of women are in the high risk category so they need consultant care but they choose to have a, a low tech birth so they'd like to use things like the birthing pool which is only available in our current birth centre, but moving forward, we're looking at having birthing pools in an intermediate suite that women can use, and we can have telemetry monitoring, so those women can be encouraged to move around in labour and to have, you know, more control over their labour as long as everything stays within normal parameters. Um, so we're really quite excited because we're joining our two services together. At the moment, we are spread over two sites. The Royal, a few years ago, had um, some updating so they have on suites to each um, delivery room but at the general the women have to come out of the room to use the bathroom so obviously for privacy and dignity on the delivery suite you need space and you need you need room and you need you need to be able to move around and know that if you come out you don't need to come out of your room um, and that will be much more reassuring for women also our postnatal services as well at the moment we've encouraged fathers to stay overnight, partners to stay overnight. And obviously since COVID, we've not been able to do that. But prior to that, we did that because that's what women wanted us to do, but we hadn't got the space to do it safely and we hadn't got the room. So these are all things that we can build into our new build. So we're really excited about that. Also, 
the proposal is, is that we close the standalone birth centre, which is currently at St Mary's in Melton, and open one at the General Hospital. And the reason that we're closing it is not because it's not doing a fantastic job. It is doing a fantastic job, but only a very small number of women go there per year. The maximum deliveries are about 180 and it's normally about 130 to 150. And that's purely because of where it is. It's situated in a place where unless you live on that side of the city, women choose not to go. And there's also a transfer time if anything was to happen in labour and you got transferred from Melton to the Royal Infirmary then obviously women take that into account when they make their choice for places to birth. So moving forward with midwifery and better births, we're looking at having more community-based care. So we're looking at community midwives being the named midwife for the pregnancy and looking after the women in labour as well. So we're going to have lots of options because you'll have home birth, you'll have the standalone birth centre, you'll have an alongside birth centre, which is basically a birth centre that's in the same building as the consultant unit. So if you need a neonatologist or an obstetrician, they're there at the touch of a buzzer. And then you've also got the high risk area for women who need it. And uh, yeah, that's basically what's going to happen. Lovely. Thank, <laughs> thanks for that, Flo. Uh, I don't know if there's any questions uh, just around that or, or other aspects of the uh, of the consultation. Um, I suppose the other area that we um, we haven't talked about in any detail, which I think goes hand in hand with the, the maternity, is um, the, the new children's hospital again on the site of the Leicester Royal Infirmary. Um, Andrew, did you just want to give a little bit more detail on, on that? Yeah, yes, thanks, uh, Sue. So uh, people may not realise, but actually uh, the children's services in Leicester are the, are the largest in the East Midlands. It just doesn't feel like that because the services are distributed across sites and, and across buildings and are often are, are not all in one place and are often alongside adult services. So part of our proposals is to move all of our children's services into a dedicated building. So as we build the new women's hospital, we will then be able to vacate the Kensington building uh, on the Leicester Royal Infirmary site, which is the current home for uh, uh, women's services. And that will then allow us to uh, refurb that building to create a, a purpose a purpose designed uh, children's hospital. We've already started to do some of that work in the sense that the uh, East Midlands Congenital Heart Services are moving from the Glenfield site to the Leicester Royal Infirmary site because they were required to to meet service specifications. Uh, and that work is already starting to take place on the Kensington building. So if you come to the Leicester Royal Infirmary site, you'll see that the Kensington building has got uh, hoardings around it and there's, there's buildings going up, uh, additions to the building, and that's the new operating theatres, uh, catheter suites, and some of the, and the outpatient facilities for the children's heart services. And the intention is that once, once we uh, start to do the, our proposals, we will then move all of our children's services into that building. And that will create something that's really quite special for uh, children of Leicester, Leicestershire and Rutland uh, in that they'll they'll have facilities that are less scary for them because they're designed for children. Uh, we will uh, have users that are involved in designing the, 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 the decor of those buildings and we're starting to do that with the, the children's heart services already. So, you know, really quite an exciting opportunity to contribute to what that building looks like and, and, and the way that uh, children use the building. Uh, we also know that that will then be uh, sort of a landmark building for attracting staff. So I think uh, once we have have that building, it will really make, be a focal point for uh, children's research training and will mean that it'll be much easier to recruit and retain staff to work in Leicester in a dedicated children's hospital. That's great. Thank you for, for that, um, Andrew. I think um, just the, the the final sort of key two aspects of the of the proposals, but very often we don't have the opportunity to um, talk um, a lot about around these events. Um, but I think because we, we haven't got as many questions tonight um, is around the hemodialysis treatment unit and also the hydrotherapy. Um, I don't know whether Andrew, could you could just come in again um, just to talk about those two key, again, really important aspects for those people uh, who rely on those services. Yeah, I could probably talk at a high level about those, but Nikki or, or, or uh, 
Darren or Justin may want to come in as well. Yeah, uh, in the sense that uh, we, as part of the moves, the renal transplant service will be moving from the Leicester General Hospital to the Glenfield site so that, that those services are uh, next to our cardiac and our vascular services because there's often quite a lot of crossover between those surgical services and, and also our inpatient renal services will move over to the Glenfield site but we will be retaining uh, a dialysis a dialysis unit on the east side of the city. Now you'll be aware that there is a, a standalone building uh, on the uh, Leicester general site at the moment but that building is actually quite small and, and it's not big enough so one of the things that we are looking at is is uh, is working with the, our, our external providers who help us provide our, our uh, renal services to look to commission a, a building on a new purpose-built building on that side of the city so that there will be uh, better facilities for people who are accessing renal dialysis from the east of the, the county and the city, recognising that we have got a lot of other satellite dialysis units around around the county and also into Peterborough and Kettering as well. Uh, so, so that's the renal services. Just remind me, see what was the other thing you wanted to talk about? Sorry. Uh, so the hydrotherapy. All oh, right. Yeah. So yeah. So one of the things that we are consulting on and the proposals is uh, is rather than to uh, build a new uh, hydrotherapy pool uh, on the new site is how we use uh, we take those facilities out into the community so that there's that, so that there are there's access to hydrotherapy in in uh, local settings that are easier for people to get to so that's that's something else that we're consulting on as well okay that's that's great thank you um so as as we're not um, I haven't got too many questions uh, tonight. Um, I think probably what I'll I'll do in the in just in terms of um, a, a summary, um, really, and and do come in while I, while I'm talking, is um, in terms of the consultation. It's really important that when we're designing and improving um, services for for people that they actually get in, get involved in that and tell us a little bit more about how any changes might impact on on them um, however large or, or small and just tell us what their views are about the proposals and that's exactly why we do this consultation to find that out to see if we can enhance, enhance the proposals in any in any way uh, and just um, ensure that everybody has the opportunity, whatever communities that they come from, that have the the, the chance to feed in. So people have a range of uh, of opportunities. Um, we have um, an online um, con uh, questionnaire, so people can go straight into the questionnaire. Um, in terms of completing it, you, there's a sort of quick version of it if people just want to say whether they agree or disagree with the plans. But if people have got a specific area that they really want to give us more information on, then um, then they can do that and provide that that um, that dialogue. Um, we've also, if people are not keen on online mechanisms, then they can call us um, and the number is 0116295. 0750 uh, and that is then the opportunity to ask us for a hard copy um, questionnaire which we can post out so that people can fill that in in at home and then arrange for that um, just post that through to us we'll make sure it, it's captured um, people do also have the, the opportunity to get information in different formats and in different languages so then they can either ring that number or or go on online uh, and then for those people who might want to share information about the the consultation with with others or just share into a conversation then we're on social media hopefully you've seen information about different aspects of the consultation on both uh, facebook um, and twitter so there's the sort of range of uh, of ways that people can um get involved uh, just checking again the chat box um, and the Q and A's. So we haven't got any any further questions um, for uh, for people. And I think what we've covered there is the whole range of the of the consultation. Um, I guess just to sum up. I don't know whether um, 
Alice, you just want to come in and just um, sum up from a, um, a CCG a clinical commissioning groups, the people who buy uh, health services, whether you just want to provide a, a summary before we close the session. Thanks, Sue. I, I think you've summarised it really well in terms of the, the point here is to get feedback, good, bad or indifferent. It's really important that we hear from those people. Um, th the, the changes we're proposing will affect in across Leicester, Leicester and Rutland. So really encouraging colleagues, uh, patients and the public to contribute in the ways that you've described. So thanks ever so much, Sue. OK, uh, thank you. Thanks everybody for, for joining. Have a nice rest of the evening.